Welcome to our number three, and we have an amazing guest who will be, I'm sure, on a number of times, Dr. Barry Sears. You know him from his Times, New York Times bestseller book, The Zone, in terms of the zone diet. Now, his analysis after 25 years of this battlefield of molecular natural dietary medicine is his amazing book called Toxic Fat, and I'm going to read the front cover. It says, Where Good Fat Turns Bad. Some extra body fat can be good. Lean doesn't always mean healthy. Eating less, exercising more may not work, and obesity is a cancer. Uh, Dr. Barry, you cut to the chase in this some remarkable uh, kind of short interview before the program, and you talked about the fact that all roads lead to inflammation, and inflammation is the imbalance of fatty acids in our diet. <clears throat> and uh, you mentioned right back to the 1920s. I recall a research report that I'd read back in McGill University in the early 20s when they are trying to push margarine, and they used to have the margarine, of course, they mix a little pad of yellow with this white margarine. The first study was kind of uh, fudged, if you want to call it McGill, where they'd actually done studies. And they were trying to prove that if you didn't feed animals cholesterol, uh, that it would be good to te- feed them plant-derived oils, which they managed to start extracting in their 1920s. And what they found is these they tried to prove that the oils were good for you and that margarine stopped heart attack. In fact, all the pigs died with vascular disease. Later research going back in the 70s and later has in a sense been ignored or suppressed. Uh, your recommendations, as you mentioned to me before, was if you could eliminate all plant-derived oils <laughs> from the North American diet, safflower, sunflower, all of these plant-derived oils, it would be good for the population. Tell us why. Well, the reason why is not that you know these oils are inherently dangerous in their own right, but... Uh, when these oils, which are very rich in omega-6 fatty acids, come in contact with high levels of insulin guaranteed by a very uh, high-carbohydrate diet, it's like adding kerosene to a fire. They form a new fatty acid. This fatty acid is called arachidonic acid. Uh, We need some in very low concentrations, but in high concentrations, it kills. So uh, what I use as a terminology for arachidonic acid is really toxic fat because... It's this toxic fat, as it builds up in your body, basically drives inflammation. And from that inflammation comes virtually every chronic disease known to modern medicine, whether it be obesity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, or even Alzheimer's. Yeah, so in other words, they all lead to arachidonate and this omega-6 fatty acid is a byproduct of uh, gamma-linolenic acid, dihemogamma-linolenic acid, and the enzyme pathways that produce this. Uh, this is pretty significant. In fact, I'm going to post up your paper as a, a link to directly to today's uh, report. In the top of the paper, of course, it talks about this. This is published in the American uh, Journal of the American College of Nutrition, and it's a very, very hard science. But the real key issue people should realize is that we have a tremendous imbalance in our fatty acids and our diets in North America, and it's this uh, inflammation that leads to both thyroid resistance and insulin resistance in the tissues. It's the primary thing that causes these two key monstrosities that are causing most of our degenerative diseases. Well, and usually that's why that you know, oftentimes people, when they hear medical terminology like insulin resistance or thyroid resistance or leptin resistance, they say, geez, that sounds very, very complex. Uh, well, it is, but in reality, it's not. Right. Resistance <clears throat> is simply saying the inflammation has caused a miscommunication to take place so the hormones can no longer communicate effectively with the cells. And for all intents and purposes, we have this now a resistance that the message the hormone carries is not being communicated correctly. And we do that long enough, we call it chronic disease. Yeah, in other words, uh, this is, the resistance is just an epiphenomena of inflammation caused by these bad fatty acids. And again, you show in your diagram here the pathway goes from linoleic acid through delta-60 saturase, gamma-linoleic, dihomo-gamma-linoleic acid, and arachidonic acid. Uh, arachidonic, that sounds like a spider, so it doesn't sound good anyway. But in fact, that's the uh, the culprit. And uh, you've got a new it test. It really is. Yeah. You, you've got a new test, too, you're going to bring out. Uh, that will be available in early 2011. It will be available to health providers, naturopaths, chiropractors, nutritionists, etc. This is a very important test. Uh, tell us about the basis of it, this urinary thromboxane B2 test that will be coming Well, first up. of all, you know, the question is, how do you know if, you, uh, first of all, there's really two types of inflammation. <clears throat> the first type we're, we, are, we have knowledge of, it hurts. That's why you see a doctor. 
But there's a second type of inflammation. The, the scientific name is called low-level chronic inflammation below the perception of pain. By shorten that, just I call it silent inflammation. Right. It's the same inflammatory responses, but since there's no pain, you do nothing to stop this type of inflammation. Ah, this is okay. the type of inflammation that can linger for years, or not decades, until there's enough in-organ damage. We call it chronic disease. Right. In other words, everybody who's fat, their fat is inflamed. Yeah, more and more, you know, though there will be a, a small, small subset who are fat and are not inflamed. So that's why it looks uh, sometimes are not are somewhat deceiving. Yeah. But how do you know if you are inflamed? Well, how do you know if you have high cholesterol? Right. You can't look at a person. The only way you can tell is by a blood test. Right. And here's the problem. People hate to give blood. That's why they take their annual physical every five years. So people hate to give blood, but they don't mind giving urine. They might do it three times a day. So we, we developed a, a, a test of, to basically look at metabolites of arachidonic acid. One of those metabolites is called thromboxin B2. And as the levels of thromboxin B2 increase in the urine, then it means your levels of arachidonic acid or toxic fat are increasing in your body. And this type of test has been shown that as you increase the levels of thromboxin B2, you're more likely to get heart disease and a stroke. So in other words, um, you could do it in a fancy lipid lab, <clears throat> a ratio of arachidonic acid to EPA or eicosapentaenoic acid. But this from vaccine B2 is a real good screening test, and doctors should start doing it, health providers, insurance carriers, to determine, hey, if this is high, you're going to be at risk for all these diseases, vascular disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity. Even if you're not there now, if you continue on that pathway, that's the direction you're going. Exactly, and that's the power of the test. And now saying, mm. okay, if I have high levels of toxic fat, what drug can I use? There is no drug. Right. There is no drug known in the medical science that can reduce the levels of toxic fat in your body. Only an anti-inflammatory diet can do that. Right. Now, of course, anti-inflammatory diets involve flavonoids. We talked also briefly about uh, curcumin, which is one, but there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, green tea is another good flavonoid. Uh, the turmeric, uh, curcumin, we carry one called cell defense that has bioperin, so it's 20 times more absorbed. We also have one we discussed in the last uh, segments. C3 curcumin has been researched at a number of major medical places because curcumin seems to reduce both brain inflammation, arterial inflammation, and vascular disease. How do these work to counteract the negative effect of things like arachidonic acid and these toxic or inflammatory fats? Well, this is where molecular biology comes into the picture. Uh, you know, for the last 70 years, of nutrition was put on the back burner. It's saying it's not powerful like drugs. You know, if you are if you are a drug manufacturer, you're you're the master of the universe. Well, that that was all true until we had new breakthroughs in molecular biology, and we could begin to now look how the cell really mounts an inflammatory responses to protect itself. Right. And once we understand that, we say, oh my God! You know, the most powerful tools we have maybe foods themselves. Yeah. In particular, in your cell, there's a genetic master switch. It's called nuclear factor kappa B. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, if this is activated, you basically turn on your inflammatory, uh, let loose the dogs of war, to begin attacking every cell nearby. So right. any way you can basically keep that uh, nuclear factor kappa B or that genetic master switch under control will go to your benefit to reduce inflammation. And this is how the polyphenols, the bioflavonoids, and other uh, agents work. They inhibit the activation of that particular genetic master switch. Oh, yeah. now, how do you know, how do you know, know if you have bioflavonoids in the diet? Well, you eat a lot of colorful carbohydrates. That's, the bioflavonoids give foods their color. Yeah, things like uh, broccoli, eggplant, uh, kale, uh, red and green peppers. In other words, bright colored vegetables. Exactly. Amazing. Back in a moment. 